The Apostles' Creed says that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. We hear this every year right before Christmas. It's in the first chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. The Archangel Gabriel comes to Mary and says that she will conceive and in her womb and she will bear a son when the Holy Spirit comes upon her and the power of the Most High overshadows her. Understandably, this confuses Mary. She knows how things work. That's not how women get pregnant. But she trusts that this angel, who has been sent by the Lord God, speaks the truth to her, and she submits to the word of the Lord that's spoken by the archangel Gabriel. So what exactly is the difference between being made and becoming man, though, because Jesus isn't a creature. He is the creator in a very real sense. In Genesis 1, God spoke his word and the universe was made. He said, and there was. And now, as St. John says, the word became a flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus isn't created by God. Mary doesn't make Jesus. She bears the Son of God in her womb, and by the natural working of the female reproductive system, she forms the flesh and body that becomes man, becomes the enfleshed Son of God. But the Son of God isn't created in her womb. Only the human nature of Jesus is. And that's what we find so hard to believe, that the almighty God who has existed from eternity, the only begotten son, now takes on human flesh. The son of God was begotten of the father from eternity. That means there never was a time when the son was not. He was always and forever the son of God. And that eternal son who existed from eternity by the power of the Holy Spirit and the overshadowing of the Most High found his way into the womb of the Virgin Mary and became man, became enfleshed in the baby formed within her. And so that child grew from the size of a dividing cell to a full-term infant Jesus born in Bethlehem to the baby who fled to Egypt and then was raised to adulthood in Nazareth. And the whole time, from diapers and breastfeeding to Passover feasts in Jerusalem, and even when being baptized by John in the Jordan, he was fully and completely God in the flesh. Now, this may be no easier to understand now than just a couple of minutes ago, but that's the thing about faith. We trust that what the Lord God says to us and about us is true and faithful. That this Son of God, this Jesus was born for us and for our salvation to live our life, to bear our sin, to die our death, and to rise in our resurrection that we may no longer be separated from God, but be reunited with him face to face for all of eternity. We are the pro-life generation. That's what today's high school and university students are calling themselves. Why are youth for life? Lutherans for Life's Why for Life community helps answer the question. Why for Life engages and equips today's learners to be tomorrow's leaders through education, networking, and service. Learn more about bringing Why for Life to your church and school at whyforlife.org. That's the letter Y, the number 4, L-I-F-E dot org.